What we're going to do to take a look at today is the sales order picking process. So what we're going to do is a very simple example where I'm going to take um, pick the product and then just put it to the bay door. So I'm not going to do any staging location or packing location for this particular example, but just want to give an uh, over, overall review of, of the sales order picking process in Dynamics 365. So let's start off by looking at the setup. So if I go to uh, warehouse management setup and then go and look at, let's look at the location directives first. I've got several uh, warehouses in here, so I'm going to filter this down to warehouse 64, the one I'll be using today. So I basically have three location directives. I've got picks, a pick and two puts. So let's start off and take a look at the pick uh, location directive. The, the main piece that I want to look at is, is the actions. So on the actions, I'm, I'm looking for the product in two places. So the location directive is going to, going to tell the system where to uh, pick the item from. So this particular example, I've, I've only have two, two actions, which is only, only uh, look for it in the fixed location for the product, and then also look for it in other, uh, other locations as well. So it could be a fixed or non-fixed. So what it'll do is it'll look here first for the, for it, for the product in a fixed location. If it doesn't find it there, it will move on to the second directive. Now in the second directive, I do have a, a little bit of the, uh, I've edited the query here a little bit. So if we take a look at that, um, what I only want to look in other locations that are of type pick. So I've got several different types of locations. You know, I've got bulk and, and picking and, and just different types of locations. I don't really want to look in bulk. I just want to look in other pick locations. We'll look at, at another in another video. We'll take a look at and see how we can replenish from bulk to the picking locations. But for this example, we're just going to pick from either a fixed location or we're going to look in the other picking locations for the item. Then if we look at the puts, we have two different puts here. And the only difference between the two are is this multi-flag. So it's got multiple SKU checked on that one and then unchecked on that one. So if we're dealing with multiple SKUs, which most people are, you do have to have um, a, another uh, put directive uh, for multiple SKUs. Now, in this case, mine is exactly the same for put, put and put multi. Just the uh, this uh, slider here is checked yes on, on the put multi. So other than that, it's exactly the same. So if we look at this one, again, this example is very simple. So we're just going to the bay door on it. Uh, if I go ahead and go to edit query here, the way I'm specifying that is I'm just going saying take it to location bay door. All right, so if we go and take a next, take a look at the work templates that are set up around this one. So I'm going to go to setup, work, and work templates. Again, I'm going to filter down to just my warehouse 64 that I'm looking at today. I've only got one, one work template for a sales order. So the default here is sales order, uh, 64. So I've got a pick and a put. So again, very simple. It's going to do a pick and it's going to use the location directives for the pick side. And then it's going to do a put and, and do, a, um, do the put, uh, look at using the put look very, uh, location directives for that one. So notice I do have a directive code here. I specified bay door on the directive code. I should have shown you that on the um, on the location directive. So I'll go back and look at the location directives here, and we'll take a again a look at uh, warehouse sixty four. On the put here, I uh, have a location directive code of bay door. So I've specified that on my work template. So I'm I'm ensured that I'm gonna it's gonna look at these two look these two location directives. Now this is handy if you've got multiples, you know, maybe you have other location directives that are going to pack or staging locations. This just helps the system identify the exact uh, location directives that you want to use. All right, so the next thing, let's go ahead and we'll create a sales order uh, for these items. So I'm going to go down to um, sales and marketing and we'll go to all sales orders and we'll create a new one. So I'm going to use Forest Wholesales, US003, and the warehouse I'm going to use is 64. So I'm going to clear out the presets there and say OK. All right, the two items I'm going to use today is an L0006 uh, 
and we'll pick we'll get order two of those and then we'll create another line for an L0100 and we'll just have one of those okay so we have our two items on the on the sales order so we got our L0006 and L0100 what we'll do next is go to warehouse and we'll do a release to warehouse all right and let's go ahead and take a look at the work that was created so if I go to the warehouse here and look at the work got a work record created where I'm picking um, two of the L006 from location pick five and one of the L0100 from location pick two and we're going to put that into the bay door so the bay door is the final shipping location so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go over to the um, uh, mobile. I'm, I'm just using the mobile portal today for this. Uh, so I'm going to copy this work ID because there's, there's going to be two different ways we can do this. So the first way is uh, if you can print the work ID and pick it that way. So if I go to sales picking, I've got a user directed option here where it's going to ask me for the work ID. I just put that work ID and hit enter and that's going to, um, going to do a user directed will direct me. Um, the other way we can do it is uh, is a system directed. So if I click in here, it's going to take me to the uh, to the work to, to be done. So the first one it's going to say is pick. Uh, we need to go to location, pick five, and get two of L006. So I'm just going to say okay that I've got it. And now it's going to tell me to go to go pick from location pick dash uh, two for item L0100 for one of those. And I'm going to say okay, I've got that one. Now it's going to tell me to take those three items. So there's multiple items. It's going to take three of those and take that to the bay door. So we'll go ahead and say OK. And we've completed that work. OK, so two, two ways to complete that work is either specifying the, um, the work ID or you can have the system direct you to, through the work. So if we go in here and we'll, we'll go back to the work and we'll take a look at it here. If we uh, refresh this screen, we should see that all the work is closed. This means that we've performed all of the actions. So the next step would be to go and find the shipment. Um, so let's, we'll, we'll go to the shipments page. And we'll go to the warehouse management. And we're going to go to shipments, all shipments. And I should have a shipment here for warehouse 64 that's loaded. And this will be our, our our shipment here. This will be the last one in here for our L006 for two and our L0100 for one. Okay, so shipment ID is 81. All right, so what we'll do at this point is we're going to go to the shipment and I'm going to confirm the shipment. And that shipment is confirmed. Once it's uh, confirmed, you'll notice it disappears from the screen. If I click on display close shipments, uh, we, I'll see it come back in here because it's, now it's marked as shipped. So from the shipment screen, another thing that I like to do here is if I go to the shipment, um, I can go ahead and, and generate the packing slip. You can also go to the sales order and do it. It's handy to do it from the shipment um, because it if you've got multiple sales orders on there, this will get them all. Um, but uh, you can do it from the sales order if you want. All right, so I'll go ahead and generate this packing slip. Okay, so we have our packing slip generated for our, our items, our two items for two and, and one. I'll go ahead and close that. And then the final step in the process is to go ahead and invoice that sales order. So we'll go back out to the sales order. Um, so we'll just look at the shipment. The shipment remains a, as shipped here. Okay, and we'll close this. We'll go back to our sales order. All sales orders. And here's our four sale, our four wholesales. And notice the status of it has been changed to delivered there. So we know that that one's ready to be invoiced. Click on that. And then we'll just follow our normal invoicing process to invoice that. And okay. Okay, and then there's the invoice. So in this example, we just did a basic end-to-end, -end, uh, create the sales order, pick it using Advanced Warehouse, you know, confirming your shipment, printing the uh, packing list, and then invoicing the sales order. 
So in the interest of time, I didn't show you every um, every setup that needed to be done in advanced warehouse. A, a couple of the setups that I didn't show you would be common uh, setups would need to be done anyway to set advanced warehouse up. I have uh, included those in the blog post, which is linked below. So I hope you uh, find this video interesting and uh, can uh, use this on one of your implementations. Thank you.